is this will be the best video on YouTube to remove late payments off of your credit report and keep them off for good. So stay tuned and please watch this video into its entirety because I'm going to discuss everything that you need in order to remove late payments off your credit report. I have five golden nuggets in this video that are going to completely change your credit for the rest of your life. Watch the video until the end. Do not skip anything because what I'm about to share with you guys is what I use to remove late payments off. In this video, I'm not holding anything back. I'm going to show you how I remove it. I'm going to show you the 18 types of late payments. There are many different types of late payments. And for each late payment, you have to treat it a specific way because there's different banks that you have to work with. There's macro and micro. In order to be good at credit repair and get items removed off your credit report, you have to be able to understand the macro and the micro. The macro rules and regulations and then the micro. So it gets simple and then it gets complex. It's like a tree. First starts off with the base and then big branches and then smaller branches and even smaller branches. But you can reverse engineer back to the trunk of the tree in order to really understand what you're doing. There's different 18 different types of late payments and then there's hundreds, thousands of different financial institutions that have their own policies, which we will get into later. Number two, there's 22 risk factors of late payments. And if you do not know those 22 risk factors, then it's to no surprise, maybe you have a late payment or you're probably gonna get a late payment on your credit report very soon. Or maybe you're not even aware you have a late payment. There are times where customers that tell me they didn't even know they had a late payment because they have so many accounts open that maybe one was late, their score drops. I know credit can get really time consuming and can be overwhelming but just watch this full video because you need to know these 22 risk factors of getting late payments. This is going to prevent you of getting a late payment. And if you're one of those people where you're like, oh, well, I'm not gonna get a late payment, good for you, but don't get cocky. I've seen it happen day in and day out where people just don't plan for the future and they don't minimize their risk. And then what do you know? This video will discuss the 18 different types of late payments, the 22 risk factors of late payments, because if you don't know these, 22 risk factors, you're at high risk. And you're gonna also know the risk factors of late payments, the 22 factors in order to remove the late payments as well. So you can't skip steps. Now number three, I'm gonna show you the laws that keep late payments off. There are two laws, two main laws that I use to remove late payments and keep them off. And if you don't know these two laws, well, this is the video for you, but you're gonna to need to watch the entire video from beginning to end in order to get this because it doesn't make any sense at all for me to tell you these two laws, but you don't know the 22 risk factors of the late payments and you don't know the 18 different types of late payments that you have because these two work in conjunction. These two work in conjunction with those laws. Now, number four, I'm gonna show you case studies. Case studies, I have hundreds, hundreds of case studies. So what I want you to do is I want you to make a side note and check out my playlist, my review playlist of clients that I've worked for. Now, these aren't all the case studies I have. I don't have the time to upload them on YouTube because a lot of them are not appropriately in video format. And a lot of clients are not allowing me to show their credit reports, even if I mark out the name, their address, and all their personal information, they're just not having it. I understand that. I respect those customers. But for the people, the clients that have allowed me to use their case studies as uh, presentations for you guys to show this is real, this really helps out those people that are trying to figure out if this works. Because there's a lot of uh, how to remove late payment uh, videos on YouTube, but lots of people don't have any success. And I've had clients that have told me about people like Marvin Francios and uh, Dave Cousins and this guy, that guy, uh, and whoever, Panda, Dispute Panda, and it's not working. And I found out based upon the testimonies that they told me on their accounts, they're doing something different. So it makes sense. If I'm getting hundreds of case studies on how to remove late payments with this, these two laws, the common denominator is that this is actually working. Now, out of these hundreds of files that I'm showing you, they're all randomized from different states. Actually, each and every single one of these hundreds are from different states and different age groups. 
and very different, diverse demographics. I have Spanish clients, Mexican clients. I have uh, Vietnamese clients. I have Chinese clients. I have uh, clients from Paris. Uh, I have Eastern European clients, black, African, like people from Africa, right? People living in Africa and I'm working on their credit. People living in Germany and I'm working on their credit. People living in Asia and I'm working on their credit. Lots of people travel. And if you're an American citizen, you have credit and you might have late payment. So this would show you that we have all these randomized uh, case studies. This is how you get it off. These two laws right here. So I'm going to show you these case studies to prove to you that this works. That way you have full confidence that this is how you remove late payments and keep them off forever. And number five, which is the bonus, I'm going to show you a do-it-yourself late payment removal where I go into the credit reports and I'm gonna show you how I do it specifically. There will be no questions because you will see the credit report, you will see how I tackle it and how to remove it. Now, it's not as easy to do it yourself because there's other back-end factors that you need to account, but I will show you how I remove specifically the late payments. But there's also prep work that you must do in order before you remove the late payment, which I will go into a little bit, but for the lack of time, I won't be able to show you that prep work that is required, but I can show you how I specifically remove the late payment. So essentially, yes, I'm gonna show you how to remove the late payment and keep the late payment off your credit report, but in order to counteract other uncontrollable variables, because, you know, just like a cake, if you bake a cake, you can't bake a cake in reverse, right? You can't have the oven, you can't, you know, throw the eggs in and then heat it up. You got to put it all together in a systematic order, just like credit repair. But an oven is a controlled environment. So it's safe to say if you follow those steps, you're going to get the result nine times out of 10 each time, unless there's other, if the, if the oven explodes and stuff like that. Assuming we live in a perfect world or a regular working oven, it's going to work. However, in credit repair, it's not necessarily the same because there are other uncontrollable factors. that you need to be prepared for. So even if I show you a do-it-yourself late payment removal guide, if you run into problems later on, well, you're gonna need to know how to counteract those. There are goodies for everyone. If you are looking to know if I'm competent enough to get these things off, this is a video for you. You can hire me if you are looking for someone to hire and you wanna make sure that they know what they're doing and they can prove and back it up, this video is for you. I can clearly show you that I've done that for many years. So those of you that are new to the channel, I've, I've been in credit repair for 10 years and I've been having awesome success throughout my entire career. Companies like Best Company have us top rated for many years, uh, badcredit.org, Better Credit Blog, we're on. Even the World Financial Review wrote articles about us. We're pretty well known in the financial sector. Do a Google search, fast credit repair. You're gonna find us ranking on number one on Google organically. Why? Because we're obviously doing something right. For those people that don't want to hire me for whatever reason, or those of you that are doing credit repair that have had no success, this video is also for you. This video is for everyone, for people that want to hire someone, people that don't want to hire someone and learn, and people that are doing credit repair and are not getting the results that they want. Well, this is for you. This will help you out. We have a lot for everyone, so watch the video until the end. Now we're gonna to go to my PowerPoint presentation so we can be more descriptive. This keeps late payments off forever. Two laws you need to know about. All right, so let's go over the 18 different types of late payments and then the subcategories of the actual companies that will have these late payments. All right, so if we look right here where it says credit cards. Credit cards are the number one uh, late payment types that we have. So credit card companies like Chase, if you're trying to remove a late payment off of a Chase account, this is a video for you. Late payments on Capital One, late payments on American Express, late payments on Discover Card, late payments on Citibank. Mortgages, you can have late payments on your mortgage accounts. If you have a Wells Fargo home mortgage, we can remove those late payments. Bank of America home loans, you can also remove those late payments. Quicken loans, 
You can also remove those late payments off your credit report. JP Morgan, if you have a late payment on your JP Morgan Chase home lending account, we can remove those late payments. If you have a late payment on your US bank home mortgage, we can remove those late payments. I'm just gonna go down the list. So we have City Mortgage, Rocket Mortgage, by Quicken Loans, you guys can just make a side note. If you have any of these accounts, you need to get a piece of paper out and mark these down because there are specific ways on how to handle those certain banks too that we will go into later. Guild Mortgage, Caliper Home Loans, PHH Mortgage, SunTrust Mortgage, Freedom Mortgage, Flagstar Bank, Nation Star Mortgage, now it's Mr. Cooper, uh, BB&T Home Mortgage, Guaranteed Rate, Loan Depot, New American Funding, Movement Mortgage, PennyMac Loan Services. Now, auto loans, you can have late payments on your on one of your auto loans. If you uh, finance a vehicle with Ford Credit and have a late payment, we can remove those late payments for you. If you have financed a vehicle with Ally Financial, Toyota Financial Services, Honda Financial Services, Capital One Financial, Capital One Auto Finance, we can remove those as well. <coughs> Student loans, if you have a late payment on a student loan, we could also remove those as well. Navient, Sally May, Federal Student Aid, Discover Student Loans, and Nelnet. Any one of those late payments we can remove, particularly to student loans. Uh, we would remove the account in its entirety. Now, a lot of people might ask, is it possible to remove a student loan? Yes, it is. We've removed tons and tons of student loans on a couple of different laws that we have used that have been very successful. Uh, I'll make another video on how to remove the account off. Generally, that's how you want to treat a student loan. When you have a student loan account, you just want to remove the main account off. Now, you might ask, well, um, do I still got to keep on paying that student loan account? Yeah, right, unless you've opted into some student loan forgiveness, right? You can get those accounts fixed, right? That's another topic. Don't really want to go into that deeply. I'll make another video based upon that. Personal loans. Usually people use personal loans to consolidate their uh, credit card debt. Personal loans are notoriously known for that. SoFi, if you have late payment on SoFi, Avant, Lending Club, Marcus Goldman Sachs, Upstart. What I see a lot is people attempt to get a personal loan to consolidate their credit card debt, but then they even default on the personal loan, which is really bad. If any one of these accounts that you see here that if you've defaulted on, you really don't have any other choice but to try to remove it off your credit report one way or the other by paying off or settling that account or getting it written off as a charge off and it exceeding the statute of limitations to collect the debt, which there's another video that I might leave in the description below. You can check out that. It's Fair Debt Collections Practice Act that you need to become familiarized with in order to get these uh, debts that are already defaulted. This is a late payment video. These are for people that have late payments but you might be heading in the direction of defaulting. So you gotta think about this. Do you really have the means to um, pay this account off? Well, if, it's, if you do, then you gotta use this video to remove the late payments and salvage those accounts as best as possible and even just make them perfect again, which this video I'll show you how to make it perfect. Okay, so let's go into home equity lines. Home equity lines like HELOC or when you have a mortgage and then you borrow money against the equity of the property when it's appreciated in value, you could have a late payment on that secondary loan type on the original mortgage. We call that a second mortgage in the sense. So if you have a home equity line or home equity loan with Discover Home Equity Loans, TD Bank, SunTrust, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, there are certain rules to apply to those specific accounts that work individually with those banks that I could help you with personally if you hire me. Installment loans. Installment loans are kind of like personal loans, but they could be pretty much a they're just the, the word installment loan is just a loan with a term. All right. Best Buy financing installment loan for maybe a TV or a computer, uh, expensive purchase like that. That's like four thousand dollars or entertainment center, et cetera, et cetera. There's even speakers. One guy, his name is Wesley Million uh, Dollar Virgin. He's a mentor of mine. He has a speaker in his penthouse in Austin, in Houston, Texas. That's worth $40,000. Imagine that. 
So he might have an installment loan for that speaker. Who knows? So as you can see, you can get expensive stuff from Best Buy. Ashley Advantage card, Affirm. Affirm uh, one main financial is a big one. Lightstream. You could have a retail store credit card and have a late payment on it, such as a Macy's credit card. We can remove a Macy's credit card late. We can remove a Target red card late payment, Home Depot credit card, Walmart credit card, and Kohl's charge off. Now keep in mind, all of these loan, these types of payments, these types of late payments for each and uh, every single one of these companies, I have removed off personally for my clients with 100% success rate. I'll say again, all of these companies, but not limited to these companies, I just put the most popular ones for the sake of time, I have successfully removed with a 100% success rate. There you have it. So this is the video for you if you want to remove late payments off and keep them off forever. Now let's go into medical bills. Medical bills are similar to student loans. You just want to, you know, uh, you just want to get them off your credit report. But some people are still making payment arrangements. You don't want to get a late payment on medical bills. If that's the case, just pay it off. RC, R1, RCM, IC System, Conscient Healthcare, Med One Solutions, and EOS CCA. Utility bills you can get a late payment on, like your Con Edison, your pg e bill, your Duke Energy, Southern California Edison, National Grid. Like if you live in New York, National Grid is a, is a big company. pg e is for, you know, Pacific Gas and Electric. That's for people out West. Cell phone bills. Verizon Wireless is a big one. I'm, I'm sure you guys, uh, one of you guys must have uh, defaulted on a Verizon bill. They're really hard to get off. But yes, we have removed Verizon Wireless off credit reports. AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, now part of T-Mobile, and US Cellular. We have removed late payments off for our clients and removed those accounts completely off credit reports for our clients. Rent payments. Uh, you know, those vary, uh, vary by property management company. Graystar, uh, Graystar is one. Equity Residential. Avalon Bay Communities is another. There's more out there, but those are just some popular ones. Subscription services you can get a late payment on. Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Disney, Spotify. Those are late payments. Child support you can have late payments on. Now, that varies through jurisdiction depending upon what state you're in. Tax liens, uh, IRS tax liens, State Department revenue, uh, judgments. Again, same thing with child support. It varies by... Um, by uh, jurisdiction, but usually those are usually those are just debts, like a collection account, right? HOA dues; those can be reported to a credit report. I'll give you some popular ones: EG, First Service, Residential Associates, Real Management, and also gym memberships. If you have a gym membership at LA Fitness and have a late payment, Planet Fitness, Anytime Fitness, Twenty Four Hour Fitness, Gold Gym. I've seen collections. And late payments on credit reports for these uh, individuals. So we have the, the we have the 18 different types of late payments. This is really important because if you want to repair your credit, you need to hone in with the magnifying glass and understand what company you have the late payment with. Because depending upon the company you're working with, will determine your strategy and how they usually conduct their business. Each and every single one of these companies are most likely in a different state with different state rules. So number one, you want to understand the type of company and then you want to understand where they're located because those rules apply for different jurisdictions. Not all jurisdictions are created equal. Some states have better laws than others. Meaning when I say better, what does better mean? Better means it works. The chances of you getting the negative item off using their municipalities or their st state statutes would be in your favor versus going to the federal laws, which would back up, usually back up the, the state laws. Moving on to the next slide, which is the reasons for being late. This is really important. Guys, it's important to understand uh, the reason for being late, because if you don't understand the reasons for getting late payments on your credit report, number one, uh, it's going to be hard to get off the late payment because you're going to have to tie in the reason why you're late and build justification and the key word here make a side note of this precedent precedent would be the king of everything in credit repair you need precedent you need exhibits 
You need precedent and exhibit. And if you have precedent, then I'm sure you have exhibits. So you have proof. Precedence is basically a reason, a good reason why you were late, why you defaulted, blah, blah, blah. And you need to cite, have a citation of the law, which is your precedent, the law that was violated, right? The, your rights that were violated, whether the creditor violated those rights or the bureaus violated those rights. Usually it's a creditor. And also your exhibits. You need your documents. You need your proof. I'm going to show you how to get that later on in this video. But you need to understand this first because if you don't understand the reasons for getting late payments on your credit report, you have a high risk of getting them on your late your, your credit report. You have a high risk of getting them on your credit report later. So you need to understand these reasons and become familiarized for them to prevent them from happening in the future. Because maybe you don't have them now. Maybe you don't have a late payment now, but you will get one in the future if you have any one of these uh, potential risk factors. You need to reduce your risk factor and understand these reasons. So let's go into them. So reasons for getting late payments on credit report, a financial hardship, job loss, reduced income, or unexpected expenses like medical bills. Maybe you lost your job or your salary was reduced, or maybe you have a business and sales aren't coming in. These are all factors that could affect you. Maybe you had an emergency and you had a medical bill that ate up some of your income. Poor budget management. This is a big one. A lot of you guys um, don't really know how to track your spending properly. My suggestion is to get a spreadsheet. So poor judgment management, mismanaging finances, and overspending. High debt load. High levels of debt making it difficult to meet obligations like credit card debt, etc., etc. Emergency expenses, unplanned costs such as car repairs, home maintenance, or medical emergencies. Forgetfulness. Some of you guys forget. Simply forgetting a, a, a payment is due could get a late payment. Imagine that you forgot. Well, there are mechanisms to help you. We'll go into that later in the next slide. Banking errors. Errors that could be out of your control. Maybe you're not forgetful. Maybe you have that set up. Maybe you have good income. I had clients that have eight that I have clients that say they make eight hundred thousand a year, but they still have late payments. Why? Banking errors could be one. Issues with the bank transactions or payment processing errors. That is a very very uh, important thing. Payment processing delays. Delays in processing of late payments. Delays in processing late payments made on or near the due date. That's an important one. Change in the billing cycle, not just to the new billing cycle or due date, right? So that's an, uh, that's an important one. Disputes with creditor. You might have an open dispute with creditor. It might not pay. <clears throat> Disagreements over charges leading to withheld payments, right? That could be one. And that gets complicated. Travel or relocation. Being away from home or moving causing missed payments, right? Don't have access to mail, illness or disability, health issues preventing from timely payment. Maybe you were sick and forgot. Technical issues, online banking glitches. That's happened before for my clients or automated payment failures. It's an important one, especially if you're moving and changing phones. Moving is also changing a cellular device. Maybe you have a Samsung phone. I did this recently. How does Samsung change to iPhone? And even if you change from iPhone, six the iphone 10 or 15 like the one i have uh it, there, it can be complicated you have to reinstall your apps and do all this you know uh security codes and two-factor authentication maybe you changed your number who knows maybe you got a new number maybe you got a second line etc etc postal delays postal delays delays in mail delivery for those who pay by check maybe you pay by check and there was a postal delay natural disasters this is a rare one but it's happened happened. Hurricane Katrina is a big one. Hurricane Katrina and before that Floyd. Events like hurricanes or floods disrupting normal payment routines. Don't underestimate Mother Nature. If you especially live on the East Coast in Florida, right? It could happen to you. I've had people, even fires, wildfires. And I had a client that their house burned down. I swear, their house burned down and they've lost a lot. And they hired me to fix their credit. Fraud or identity theft, that's another one. Unrecognized charges leading to disputed accounts. Maybe someone hacked in your credit card account with your number randomly or whatever. 
they have scammers, credit card scammers can do that. And then they overcharge or buy something that you're unaware of. And then you're late and you're overdrawn. And then you have to pay the overdraft fee. And that helps. That hurts your bank and et cetera, et cetera. Incorrect auto pay, same, uh, auto pay setup. Errors in setting up or maintaining automatic payments. That's another one. Lack of financial literacy. That's a big one. Not understanding the importance importance of time of the payment. Some guys might say, oh, it's just not a big deal. They're a missile late, late payment, 30 days late. And then you realize you go back to get a home or a mortgage or whatever. And then you're like, oh, those late payments are messing up your score. And then you become aware that, oh, you actually need credit. Time and time again, all this time has passed. And a lot of these people that have money now, but don't have enough money to get a home, like thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, they need their credit in order to leverage money from the bank to get a mortgage. And then they realize, oh, crap. I should have prevented these uh, 22 risk factors. Should have watched Andre's content, should have subscribed, should have hired Andre to fix this and be mentored by him so I can understand this stuff. So please don't be that person. If you're watching this video, take note of all of these 22 risk factors. Mental health issues, depression, or mental health. Well, having debt could cause mental health. I, I, I read a statistic that the number one cause of divorce is financial issues. That could definitely, uh, for those guys that have been through a divorce, I know uh, my father went through divorce and a lot of my clients go through divorce and you guys go through a lot of stress, especially if there's kids involved, that could be a bit, play a big impact on your mental health. Change in family circumstances like divorce, death in the family, or other changes affecting financial stability. Some people are married, their husband died, lose income, and then they get late payments. And then guess what? The spouse is tied into their husband's stuff, but probate is not there and they have to transfer the bank and all this. And it gets complicated. Or maybe a boyfriend. Maybe you guys love each other and treat each other like husband and wife, but you're not married. And then something happens and then it gets complicated. Transition periods like, like changing jobs or moving between careers causing temporary financial instability. That's another one. Over-reliance on credit, using credit cards excessively without the means to pay back. That's a big one as well. Okay. Unexpected increased expenses, sudden hikes in living expenses like rent and utilities. Maybe your landlord increased the rent, et cetera, et cetera. So we have the reasons for getting late payments. Now let's talk about how to prevent uh, these late payments. So here on this slide, I have preventive measures to take so you don't become late ever again. Really important. Financial hardship, if you've gone through that, a preventive measure would be build an emergency fund to cover unexpected expenses, create a budget and prioritize essential expenses. So for this, you can create a spreadsheet on, you need to create an Excel spreadsheet on how to manage all your finances. And if you don't know how to use Excel, pop on YouTube how to use it. Okay. I'm not going to make a video on how to use it. Well, maybe I will. Maybe I'll do that. I'll have an Excel spreadsheet and show you guys how to manage your bills and your credit so you can track your expenses. <clears throat> a lot of you guys have credit cards and you're going to need to track that spending. Don't just buy random stuff. Okay. Credit cards, you need to buy the same things every single month. Your credit cards, you need to buy uh, predictable purchase. You can't just buy random things with credit cards. That's misusing them. I'll make another video about that. Poor budget management. Develop a realistic budget. Track expenses. And prioritize needs over wants, guys. Needs over wants. Consider using budgeting apps for better financial management. I will go into that later. I will give you guys some apps to use. High debt load. Manage debt responsibility by avoiding unnecessary credit. Pay down existing debt and seek debt consolidation if needed. Emergency expenses. Establish an emergency fund to cover unexpected costs. Guys, put money away. The money that you spend on something that you want that's in excess, that is the emergency right around the corner that you didn't prepare for. Now, if you miss that important step and don't plan for a rainy day, that rainy day will come. And then that's when you begin to go backwards and get late payments. That's when you deteriorate your financial blueprint. That's when you destroy your credit. You have to take this stuff seriously. Take life seriously and plan for a rainy day. Protect yourself at all times, like in boxing. But in this case, protect your credit at all times. Do everything you can to protect your credit at all times. Write down 
and memorize, watch this video, <clears throat> excuse me, watch this video from beginning to end, repeat it on, take a screenshot of this, write it down and become familiarized with all these preventive measures and all the 22 risk factors of getting the late payments and try your best to prevent them. You will thank me later. <clears throat> Forgetfulness. Set up automatic payment for bills, create calendar reminders, and use financial apps to stay organized. <clears throat> Banking errors. Well, the bank makes errors. Regularly check bank statements for accuracy. Set up account alerts and notify the bank properly for any discrepancies. So you can create a limit on your debit card spending. That's really easy to do. Payment processing delays, schedule payments well in advance to the due date. <clears throat> so a lot of you guys have a bill that's due on the 25th. Well, you should schedule that payment <clears throat> like on the 10th. That's 10 days, that's 15 days before the due date. So start doing things early. Start paying off things early. Start paying things off early before the due date. There's another video that I'll leave in the description below that will teach you how to actually manage your credit cards. And this, if you follow this formula, your credit will increase, meaning your limits will increase. There's a formula to pay and use credit cards, specifically how to use credit cards to increase your credit. And if you haven't watched this video yet, it's to no surprise why your credit is stagnant. You haven't got a limit increase. Uh, here's one case study right here from a recent client that took my advice. Uh, she was able to get a credit limit increase. Let me see if I can get her. See right here. You can uh, see that. Look, paid off Amex. Let's see. Oh, I just increased my credit limit on my Home Depot from $9,500 to $20,000. Okay. This is my client, Naomi. So you can see it there. Boom. Case study right there. Okay. Let's go back to the slide. So schedule payments well in advance. Use electronic payment methods for faster processing. That's basically apps and other stuff. Change in billing cycle. Stay informed about billing, billing changes. Adjust your payment schedule accordingly to set reminders and make sure they're paid well in advance. Disputes with creditors. Communi openly with creditors. Keep records of agreements and dispute resolutions. Review statements regularly and accurately. You can hire us to help you dispute with creditors because we're pros at that. Travel relocation. Notify creditors in advance of travel or relocation. Set up electronic payments or arrange for a trusted person to manage bills. Okay? If you have a friend, family in the area, they can do that. Plan ahead, guys. Plan ahead. Protect. Take a second step and always to, uh, have a second thought about your credit. Because the moment you stop thinking about your credit and think it's all good is when all hell breaks loose. Illness or disability. Have health insurance to cover medical expenses. Number one, establish a plan for bill payment during periods of illness or disability. You can negotiate this with, with, with creditors. Uh, credit card insurance is also a real thing. Technical issues. Keep contact information updated with service providers. Monitor account activity online with apps, which I'll show you in a second. Report technical issues promptly. Post delays. Well, opt in for ele electronic payments. Send payments well in advance or use electronic payment methods to avoid postal delays. Natural disasters. Well, you can't really prevent like a hurricane from happening, but maybe just don't live where a hurricane. Like if you're rich and like you're li living on the beach in the East Coast, it's only a matter of time before a hurricane comes. Right? So think about that. <clears throat> Have insurance though. There's hurricane insurance. That's a real thing too. I don't think there's earthquake insurance. I don't know about that. Communicate with creditors in case of a temporary financial setback. Okay. Fraud or identity theft. That's another one. Accounts. Monitor accounts regularly for unusual activity. Use identity protection services. Identity protection services. We provide that here at Pinnacle. So hit me up if you're interested in that. Identity theft protection is very good. There's... Um, third-party service providers that could help you with that. And there's also manual things that you could do as far as become familiarized and being on top of your credit. You need to know your credit like the back of your hand, okay? How good do you know your back of your hand? Most of you guys have never looked at it before, okay? Or rarely. Well, you gotta, you gotta know your credit like that. You gotta be 
like know it. You look in the mirror every day. Well, look at your credit every day like it's your mirror. Your credit is your mirror. It's a reflection of your financial responsibility. So I highly suggest you keep on top of it. When you can scrutinize and when you can become like OCD about your credit, your credit's going to be good. Don't be afraid of that word. Become OCD about your credit. Incorrect auto pay payment. Well, auto pay setup. Double check auto pay settings regularly. Confirm payment amounts and due dates. Avoid errors. Okay, on to the next slide. Now, these are some apps. These are some goodies here. Apps to help prevent future late payments. Okay. Mint. Mint is a good one. Personal Capital and YNAB. You need to budget. These are all great apps for managing overall bill management and tracking. I highly consider these apps, guys. Okay. I highly consider these apps. So Mint is a comprehensive personal finance app that tracks income, expenses, and bills, providing a holistic view of your financial situation. It sends reminders for upcoming bills, allows you to set budgets, and offers credit score monitoring. Mint is awesome. I've had it for years. Okay, for payment billing, for bill payment automation and reminders, BillShark is a good one. BillShark negotiates lower monthly bills on your behalf, saving you money on reoccurring expenses. It also offers bill reminders and payment automation. That is good. Bill Shark. These apps make it so easy. Guys, go download go, go download them now. I swear we're not sponsored by any of these guys. I'm just sharing with you, you know, disclosure there. I'm not sponsored by any one of these companies or any n- nothing. I mean, I'm sponsoring this video myself with my own time and money. <laughs> okay, I'll put it that way. Nobody and nothing I talk about here <clears throat> is sponsoring this video other than you that might be a paying customer for me. That's just, I'm going to leave that out there. So this is my unbiased review of how to do this. And I'm making it as easy as possible. I prepared this presentation for you guys. Please take advantage of it. Take the time to uh, check out these apps, Bill Shark, Truebill, and Trim. I'm not going to name all of them here. You guys can do that. Uh, I'll just name the top one, the best one. I'll put the best one at the top. For emergency assistance and financial hardship, these are really good. Clarity Money. Clarity Money helps you identify areas where you can save money and provide emergency assistance grants up to $500. It also offers bill tracking and budgeting tools. That's pretty awesome. For specific types of payments, okay, like you were trying to make payments uh, and you were too reliant on the mail and you need to pay someone or a bill, Venmo was really good. Zelle and Prism. These are all the top payment apps that you could actually pay creditors and pay bills with. Even landlords, right? For credit score monitoring, financial education, Credit Karma is really good. Credit Karma is a phenomenal app. Credit Sesame is okay. And Experian is good. You have some free services there. So download those. We talked about the types of late payments. The reasons for being late, which are the 22 risk factors. So we talked about the 18 types of late payments, the 22 risk factors. And then we went over preventive measures on how to prevent those things from happening in the first place. So after you watch this video, there should be no excuse. Now, this video isn't 100% bulletproof, but it's it's your best bet. I took a lot of time to think about all these 22 risk factors. I thought to myself, what are all the possible risk factors known to man that someone could be late? Okay. And those are the ones that I found out. If you have more, please be sure to leave in the comment section so I can add them to this list and update the video. And so other people can learn these do not underestimate these 22 risk factors right here. This is so important when you can think about it. If you can't take a breather and be like, this is my meditation for the day and be like, okay, financial hardship, poor budget, check the list. Are you doing, are you in the risk for this? Are you in the risk for this? Are you in the risk for this? Are you heading in this direction? Are you forgetful? Are you, you know yourself better than I do. And maybe you don't know yourself enough. That's why you forget. So I would highly recommend you figure this part out and check these. Now, if you're one of those people like, oh, I don't need to read this. I don't need to watch this. Well, you're probably going to get a late payment. And guess what? Your laziness and your irritability is going to 
fuck you later on. And then you're going to go back to this video if you're if, if you're smart and be like, okay, well, let me actually actually learn. Prevent the heart attack. Prevent the natural disaster. Prevent all of these hardships. Prevention is the greatest cure. Do not underestimate the power of prevention. Anyone, even myself concluded, can be forgetful. So I'm on top of it. I'm like paranoid. Become OCD. Try your best to be OCD about your credit. You can't get different results and do the same thing you're doing. So this video is an invitation for you to change how you're managing your credit and how you're viewing credit because you might watch this video like, oh, I want, I want to know how to remove it. Well, guess what? If you cannot figure out this and this, it doesn't matter if I give you the two laws, you wouldn't know how to apply them because the two laws I'm about to share with you require the knowledge of all of these as it applies to you. Like if, for instance, if you had a student loan or if you had a retail credit card with XYZ creditor, you need to understand their rules and apply it with those two laws that I give you. Otherwise, you're missing the steps. Like I told you, baking a cake. If I give you the instructions from one to six, there's six steps to make a cake, maybe 10 or five to some people, depend if you combine the steps into one. Uh, you might be a lazy, impatient person and want to skip to four, but you missed one through three and you're not going to bake the cake. Now you're wondering why it didn't work. Well, you have to watch videos from beginning to end. It's like reading a book. How often did you read a book and you got it the first time? This is the type of focus you need. I know in today's attention economy is like 15 to 30 to 60 seconds long because YouTube shorts. Well, you have to fix that, all right? Watch long form content more and take notes. Become a student of the game. You're not going to get anywhere in life being lazy. You're going to have to take the time to really take this serious. All right. If you want to be like the top 10%, you got to do what 90% of people are not willing to do. And I guarantee 90% of the people are not going to watch this video from beginning to end. And they're going to skip this and they're going to falter to all the BS. Okay. Even the credit repair experts that come on my channel to take content and copy it, because they all do, been in this industry for 10 years. Maybe they knew a client of mine and they tried to learn the process and they made a channel, right? It's happened plenty of times. I know a lot of credit repair people in the game and they know me. They know they've copied off me, all right? So do not underestimate the types of late payments or the reasons for being late. Now, let's go over here. Case studies, case studies, case studies. I'm going to leave a link in the description of my case studies. I want you guys to be convinced. Don't just take my word for it. I want you guys to see all of these case studies or as much as you can. That way you know Andre can do what he does. I have case studies from 10 years, 6 years, 9, uh, 3 years and 4 years and even last month of doing what I said. Removing late payments and keeping them off forever. I have those case studies. So this video is jam packed with everything you need to know in order to remove late payments and keep them off forever and prevent late payments because you can remove them by not having them on there in the first place, prevent them from being on in the first place. Now the case studies. So you can see right here, there's a few of them. I'm going to show you, uh, they're all in the link. Click the link in the description below and you can see the case studies. Now, D, um, now number five is a bonus. Since you've gotten to this part in the video, I'm going to work on some files for you. I'm going to show you how to look at these factors uh, on a credit report. So you can see with your own eyes on how to do it. Now, there are two laws. It's actually three laws. The first one is the Fair Credit Reporting Act. That's the Godhead that will support the two laws. The second, the two laws, okay, that we're looking at here, all right, let me just erase this. Are you ready for it? The two laws are number one. Okay, guys, I know I promised you to share with you these two laws to remove late payments, and I will keep my promise. I just need you to do one thing. Click the link in the description below and fill out the contact form, and I will send you 
instructions. I will send you the guide, the video on how to remove late payments off your credit report. All I ask is that you keep this secret with me. Don't share it unless you bring people to my channel. You can share the video. If you share the video, that's fine. But make sure you click the link in the description below. Fill out your form. Fill it all out. And I will send you that video to your email. Thank you.